been there when we've been nursing our baby, enjoying their company, just soaking them in, and then all of a sudden, like the jaws, this bite comes on, you are shocked, you're appalled, you're horrified that your baby would have done that to you. And your baby's gone ahead and bitten your nipple. There is no pain like it, and I think the shock makes it even worse. But I'm here to tell you that there are ways that you can both look to understand what's going on there, but also to prevent it from happening for future reference. So stay tuned for five tips on how you can avoid your baby biting at the breast. So my first tip would be let's look at when during a nursing session this occurs. The reason I say that is that our babies are flow responsive. So for instance, if we look at the beginning of a feed, if your little one goes ahead and starts to bite almost immediately, generally what's happening there is they're trying to stimulate your milk flow to start. So they are pounding at the breast, they are biting at the breast, they're chomping down to help them let down that milk ejection reflex, that milk flow begin. So what you can do is you can get, uh, get there ahead of them. You can do some gentle massage and sort of some round circular motions around the breast to wake the breast up little bit of nipple tweaking backwards and forwards. You might even decide to go ahead and do a bit of hand expression, making a C shape around the darker area, the areola, and either going in and out like this to get the milk going, backwards towards the chest wall and forward, or a little bit of nipple rolling, just to wake the breast up and get the milk moving. So you're getting there one step ahead of your baby. If it happens that your baby is at the other end of a feed, at the end of a feed, starting to bite, then the chances are what's happening is they are responding to the slowing and the slow, the slower flow of your milk. So what you can do in that scenario is either simply just get your hands involved and compress the breast down to get the flow of milk going forward. That's called a breast compression, maintaining that compression until your baby starts to swallow again, or just pop them off and pop them onto the other side where they're going to get that nice, fast, new leg down um, at the beginning of the other side on the other breast. If your baby is biting at any time from beginning to end, anywhere in the middle, that's where we're coming to our step two, which can be a case of looking at what sort of comfort measures we can offer our baby. So it might be one of those cool teethers from the fridge. It might just be something really simple like tying a knot in a muslin and dipping it into some breast milk and putting it into the freezer for a minute. That might be plenty enough to sort of cool and soothe their gums for them to munch on that for a few minutes before you then go ahead and latch them onto the breast. So step number three then is going to be about looking at that nice balance between distraction and focus. So we want our babies to be fed responsively on demand, but we also want to make sure that they're able to focus in on those nursing sessions. So maybe your baby has hit those four month joyful fussies where they are just waking up to the world and they're curious about all of their surroundings and everything that's going on. It might be a case of your baby has been clamping down and biting a lot during that time to just encourage yourself to come inwards and focus those sleepy nursing sessions around your nap times so your baby can be in a dark quiet room and focus on the task at hand. Step number four then is going to be looking at how you shape your breast and the real truth of this is if your baby is deeply latched onto the breast they physically since their tongue is covering their um this is covering their teeth it's physically impossible for them while they're actively suckling to bite down on the breast hence why it happens either at the beginning or the end of a feed mostly or if the latch becomes more shallow at the end of a feed when they are flutter suckling so what we can do particularly with an older baby who's maybe um just getting some you know the back teeth and they are trying to latch on and then bite straight away using the flipple technique where you're helping your baby to get a good big mouthful of breast tissue can be really really nice so just in brief we uh, you would have seen this already if you've seen any of my any of the content that I've done around breast shaping but the flipple technique in brief is a wee bit of pressure here at the top and see what happens to the nipple it points upwards as if it's pointing up baby's nose so if I was a little baby and I was really hungry and I'd be going mummy mummy where is it what happens is you can support baby below ear level so they can still tip their head back. The chin will be hitting the breast. The nipple will be pointing up baby's nose. They get a big mouthful of breast tissue. So they're going chin first, up and on. You can roll the nipple in then. So the nipple's shooting back actually to that, that junction between the soft and hard palate where we want it to be. Well, I do it one more time. So nipple pointing up the nose, chin to the breast first as baby tips their head back to get a big mouthful of breast tissue up and on. 
So the idea there is you can see the chin is snuggled into the breast and the nose is free. So a great technique all round, but particularly useful if you've got a baby who's all of a sudden decided to start biting you. So breast shaping, that is my fourth tip. Um, my last and final tip relates to if your baby has is physically has just bitten you, what do you do? How do you get them off? How do you have a conversation and gently setting intentional boundaries in place? Because there is a there is two it's a two person job here. That dyad between the both of you needs to be respectful on both parties and you, you can't let your baby continue to bite you. So I always very say very firmly um but you know kindly no, I can't let you I can't let you bite mummy. And what you're doing instead of trying to remove your baby from the breast by either getting your finger involved to release the seal or to pull your baby away and cause more damage, what I always encourage mums to do is to say, no, you can't bite me. Bring baby towards the breast, which encourages them to open their mouth wide and then they come away from the breast. It also has a sort of double whammy of if you bring your baby close to the breast, generally you can quite uh, quite quickly occlude their nose, which means they have to open their mouth to breathe. So you're bringing baby quickly to the breast, they'll open their mouth. And what I would generally say is put your baby beside you and have that one phrase that you have that you come back to, which is, mummy can't let you bite her or, you know, Milk, t milk time is for milk and not for biting and you know something that you can have on repeat that you you know then go ahead and repeat that phrase every time that occurs so it's about setting those ben gentle boundaries saying no biting so that they know exactly what to expect and then it's about minding your breasts so breast care if you have an open wound on your breast you're coming back to minding your breast just in the same way as you would in the early days so washing your breast and your nipple twice a day in warm soapy water ideally an antibacterial soap because of course it is a breeding ground for infection and, and infection can go into the breast and you get quite unwell with an open wound. So winding it the same way you would any other wound with the moist wound healing. So that can either be a case of coming back and using your silver cups, maybe a hydrogel pad, maybe it's hand expressing a little bit of breast milk and rubbing that into the area, but just making sure that you're keeping a nice close eye on it and minding those, those sore nipples as you are healing. Outside of that, I would say, take it feed by feed, pretend you've got a really bossy lactation consultant who's just coming and like a little hawk watching every feed so that you are focused in on the depth, the depth of the latch, the attachment at the breast, how distracted or focused your baby is, whether you've offered them a teether first and whether or not you're using that nice breast shaping technique to help them get that good deep latch. Um, all of those things should be helpful for you and if you are still struggling, do let me know and I would be delighted to support you.